Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's class we will be talking about de Broglie's hypothesis and of course the matter waves. Well what are matter waves? Well this is the most important part and the most interesting part of quantum physics which relates you and me and even the smallest particle as matter and we as a matter are now considered to be as a wave by the scientists de Broglie's hypothesis. So let's begin with this. <music> We'll be talking about de Broglie's hypothesis. Well, this is important to know that it is de Broglie's hypothesis and not de Broglie's law. It could be a point of question in your viva exams. Make sure it is not de Broglie's law, it is de Broglie's hypothesis. The only difference between hypothesis and law is hypothesis is something which you have just stated by using analytical methods and you have not proved it yet. Therefore, hypothesis is something which is different from law. And do remember, it is de Broglie's hypothesis. De Broglie never proved his hypothesis and hence it could never be converted from hypothesis to law. Till the year 1924, it was believed that light possesses both particle nature as well as wave nature. And this fact was already been adopted. Well, de Broglie had something more into picture. He extended the wave particle nature of light to real world objects which we called as material objects. So this is what de Broglie did. He extended the wave particle dualism of light to material particles. Well material particles could be anything right from the minutest particle which is electron to the largest particle which is even you and me. Now this hypothesis is applicable to all the particles which are moving. Do remember this hypothesis is not applicable for stationary objects. Now, how did de Broglie get into this hypothesis? He took up the Einstein's equation, as you can see, E is equals to mc square, and he also took the Max Planck's equation, E is equals to hc by lambda. As you know, both of these two equations relate to light. E is equals to mc square relates the particle nature of light, and E is equals to hc lambda relates to the wave nature of light. De Broglie equated both the equations and finally he got a conclusion like this. Hc by lambda equals to mc square which now equals to h by lambda equals to mc and finally h is equals to h upon mc. This is the equation for wavelength of light in this case. However, de Broglie had something else to do. Now, he converted the same equation to real world object. So, according to here, his hypothesis, any moving particle is associated with a wave. Do remember, it is any moving particle. As I said earlier, it could be right from the minutest particle, which is an electron, to you and me, is associated with a wave. Well, if you and me are connected to a wave, would we be referred to as stationary waves, or longitudinal waves, or transverse waves? Well, no. We had another name, that name was called as matter waves. So these waves are nothing but as matter waves. Now, he changed the equation from h upon mc to h upon mv for real world objects. So basically, if my mass is m and I'm moving with a velocity say v, I will have a wavelength which corresponds to lambda. This is the de Broglie's hypothesis equation. Of course, why should light have all the fun? Let's consider the de Broglie's equation and jump to certain conclusions. As you know, de Broglie's wavelength is given by lambda is equals to h upon mv. Do remember, I am not taking it for light, I am taking it for real world objects and hence I have replaced the c with v. Now, the first conclusion could be, as my wavelength tends to infinity, now, wavelength tends to infinity means my lambda becomes equal to infinity. This can only happen when my velocity of the particle is zero. As you know, mass can never be equal to zero. So hence, the only possibility of having my lambda equals to infinity is having v is equals to zero or velocity equals to zero. It means that matter waves are detectable only for moving particles. Well, this is very, very, very important. What are matter waves and how are they detected? 
can matter wave be detected for something which is stationary well no if i keep an object stationary forever it won't be having any matter wave so basically another important question for your viva matter waves exist only for objects which are moving it may be possible they are moving at a fixed point but yes they should be moving now second conclusion is lighter the particle smaller is the value of mass of course as we know as the particle goes lighter this m reduces and hence longer is the wavelength of the matter wave as m reduces your lambda goes longer which is associated with it therefore the behavior of micro particles will be significant where the waves associated with macro bodies can never be detected what does this mean well to put it on a simple terms as i can say let's say suppose i have two examples in one case my mass is 1 kg and in second case my mass is 100 kg assuming they both moving with the same velocity which would be having the maximum lambda as you can see lambda for 1 kg mass will be maximum and for this it would be minimum this is the significance of the statement as you can see wave behavior of a micro particle will be significant now stating wave behavior it is nothing but as indirectly stating this lambda of micro particles micro particles means smaller particles or lighter particles will be significant or they would be having maximum lambda whereas associated with macro bodies macro bodies as you can reconclude it is the body with heavier mass as you can see in the 100 kg i am getting minimum lambda so which is less significant and in certain cases where your masses are even higher sometimes your waves are never detected therefore tending lambda as equal to 0 the third conclusion smaller the velocity of the micro particle now i have concluded my entire study to micro particle as in the second conclusion i already said it is not applicable or it is not significant for macro particle so now i have narrowed down my study to only micro particle even in micro particle if my velocity is small or i have a less value of velocity longer wavelength of the matter were associated with it well the conclusions are nothing but as just mathematical implementations of the values of m and v do remember h is a constant it can never be changed so well this could be an important question for your theory exams so i state the conclusions of de broglie's hypothesis so you just need to make sure you have to make two points first on macro particles and micro particles which is nothing but as particles with heavier mass and lighter mass and secondly jumping your study to micro particles you just have to speak about the velocity now let's study the properties of matter waves as you already know matter waves is nothing but as the waves which are produced by those particles which are moving with a velocity according to de broglie those waves are called as matter waves and now we'll be studying about the properties of matter waves now do remember before beginning with this slide all the points which i am taking here could be asked as an important theory question it has been asked in alternate years in your previous examinations so this is an important question for your theory paper these are the properties of matter wave stick to this slide the first property is they are produced by motion of the particles and are independent of the charge do remember it does not depend upon the charge be it a positive charge negative charge or even neutral it does not depend on it therefore they are neither electromagnetic nor acoustic but they are new kind of waves now of course that makes sense because if we would have properties similar to electromagnetic we would be classified as electromagnetic wave if we would have had properties of longitudinal waves we would be classified as longitudinal waves but since we don't fall into any of these categories we are provided a separate category which is of course called as matter waves and hence this is a new kind of wave secondly they can travel through vacuum and do not require any material medium for their propagations well this also makes sense because we can travel through vacuum and we do not require any material medium for the propagation now how is it so how can we travel through vacuum well the answer to this is because we are just wave 
because of the velocity that we have. Of course, even in vacuum, you can move with a velocity and your mass would never be zero. So your v lambda will never be equal to zero. And hence, it could be concluded that you can even move in vacuum. Well, this could also be a tricky question for your viva. The examiner can ask you, how about your matter wave traveling in vacuum? So the answer to this is, even in vacuum, your velocity never goes zero, neither your mass, and hence your lambda is a non-zero quantity, and hence your wave starts moving, and hence matter waves can travel through vacuum. Now, smaller the velocity of the particle, longer is the wavelength of the matter wave associated with it. As we have seen already in the previous slide, as V comes down, your lambda goes up, because lambda is equal to H upon mc. Now, the lighter the particle, the longer is the wavelength. Of course, the same example as mass comes down, your lambda of course goes up. These are nothing but as conclusions of course from the equation. The velocity of matter wave depends on the velocity of the material particle and is not a constant quantity. Well, this is an important point. The velocity of matter wave depends on the velocity of the material particle. Now, what is material particle and what is matter? Basically, to understand this, Let's put it in this way, sound can travel maximum in solid, minimum in liquid and the least in gas. So basically speed of sound is determined by the medium. Similarly in this way my velocity could be different on a different environment. So this is how my matter wave of course or my matter wavelength of course would depend on the material or on the medium in which I am traversing. This is as simple as this. The velocity of matter waves is greater than the velocity of light. Well, this could be a question mark point. How can this be possible? How can the velocity of matter waves is greater than the velocity of light? As you can see, lambda is equals to h upon m into v. Now, if my mass is much, 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 much less than the mass of even photon, my lambda would be as high as possible. Next property is the velocity of matter waves is greater than the velocity of light. And next, they exhibit diffraction phenomenon as like the any other wave. Well, these are some important properties that you need to know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This could come as a four mark question for your theory paper. It has appeared alternatively. So do remember this is an important question. Now, moving further, we'll be talking about de Broglie's wavelength associated with an accelerated charged particle. Now, accelerated charged particle is nothing but as a charge which is accelerated to move at a higher velocities. Now, let's study this in detail. As you know, if a charged particle, let's say suppose an electron as you know, electrons charge is E, of course, with a negative sign, we'll be talking only about the magnitude, is accelerated by a potential difference of V. And then its kinetic energy is given by Ke is equals to E into V. As you know, the kinetic energy is nothing but as a charge into the potential by which you are accelerating it. Also, I know that kinetic energy is given by half mv square. Now, I'll be equating these two equations to get something like this half mv square is equals to e into v. Just rearranging, I'll be getting v square is equals to 2 ev by m and then taking the square root, I'll be having the value of v as 2 ev by m. This could be a question for your numericals. Do remember this is the velocity of the electron or the charged particle which is accelerated with a potential of v. This theory or this formula can be remodified for any charge Q and any voltage V. So instead of E, there would be your charge Q and for V, this would be a voltage value. The rest everything remains the same and of course where M is equal to the mass of the particular uh, material for which you are talking about the charge. Now, as you know, we have lambda is equal to H upon MV. Now, we'll be substituting the value of V as we obtained here in this equation. So I'll be getting something like this. Lambda is equals to H upon M and here, here I have substituted the value of V of electron, which is accelerated with a potential of V. 
Now rearranging this, I'll be getting something like this. Solving further, I'll be getting lambda as h upon under root of 2 m e v. Do remember this is an important formula to get the value of the wavelength for an electron which is accelerated with a potential of v. Now this formula relates wavelength, potential and charge and mass of course. Now also you know that kinetic energy is equal to half mv square as we had stated earlier. So I can rearrange this as 2 into kinetic energy is equals to mv square. Multiplying m on either sides, I'll be getting 2ke is equals to mv square. I'll be getting 2m into ke is equals to m square v square. Now, as you know, you'll be taking m into v in one bracket and taking the power common. I'll be getting 2m ke is equals to mv the whole square. Taking the square root, I'll be having 2m times ke is equals to m into v. I'll be just substituting the value of mv in this equation to get the value of lambda. So I'll be getting the value of lambda as h upon 2m ke. Do remember this is again an important formula where you have related lambda, kinetic energy and of course mass of the electron is known. You should remember both of the formulas to solve the numericals in the coming classes. Thank you so much for watching this video. For more content, stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.